It's V Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Valvano's fight against cancer. And welcome to Valvano Arena here in Reynolds Coliseum. Fantastic atmosphere for women's college basketball. The Illinois State Redbirds come to town off a red hot six and one start. Take it on the NC State Wolfpack, number five team in the country for a fantastic Sunday of women's college basketball. Here inside Reynolds Coliseum with an NC State legend, Kai Crutchfield, I'm Evan Budjervich. The Wolfpack at number five in the country, a slow start and finish against Vanderbilt on Wednesday. Illinois State, top 15 three-point shooting team in the country. How can the Redbirds surprise the Wolfpack today? As Illinois State, making sure they just open the knock, knock down the open shots. I mean, they have two players that are shooting above 40% from three, making sure that they penetrate and dish and drive in the gaps. And if you're NC State on the reverse, Saniya Rivers, such an elusive guard, a dominant presence. How does she carry the load for the Wolfpack today? Making sure that they stay play, play consistent as a team. Um, you know, last game they had a 26-point lead against Vanderbilt, but you saw them play more as individuals towards the end of the game. That allowed Vanderbilt to come within nine with only two minutes left in the game. Tonight Rivers was fantastic. National Player of the Week two weeks prior and took over against Vanderbilt Wednesday. Countering for Illinois State, preseason all Missouri Valley. Deanna Wilson for a Moberly Area Community College. Fantastic transfer last year and a big time scoring presence for the Redbirds. Yes, Wilson needs to make sure she stays a consistent threat. NC State is going to have uh, their hands full for sure with Deanna Wilson. I mean, coming off of a hot game, averaging 16, 16 points a game, and from the free throw line, she's 70%. Illinois State scored 102 points in a win over Chicago State. And how about this? Head coach Kristen Gillespie was a player here at NC State, graduated in 98, worked under Kay Yao as an assistant. This is her first time back in Raleigh as a coach. An emotional moment for the Gillespie family. For sure, and I mean, there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of emotion. I'm sure tied with everything. You know, being back in Reynolds Coliseum, you see here she's taking a nice deep breath and getting ready to you know coach these girls to hopefully get a dub. The entire Gillespie family's in attendance today. This should be an awesome atmosphere. Sold out crowd and an alumni day here in Raleigh. Glad to have an alum with us here, Kai Clutchfield. I'm Evan Budjovic. Coach Kristen Gillespie, who was maybe the best non-stat starter in NC State history. Her and Debbie Antonelli have that feud going on. Her program, though, it's 6-1, and one, off to a fantastic start. River Baldwin, excellent position on the first possession of an easy layup. That was a great feed, and it's also good River Baldwin is keeping that, keeping that defender on her back. This Illinois State starting five. Maya Wong, the assist leader in the Missouri Valley, and a team that scores a good amount with balance. Open three here, and an air ball. That's the challenge for Illinois State, shooting at 40% for three after the miss from Kate Bowman. They don't take a ton of threes, but hit open shots. And that's and that's a good thing, you know, as far as efficiency. You know, keep the keep the momentum as far on offense, making sure the ball keeps moving, doesn't get stuck in anybody's hands. River Baldwin anchors the starting five for NC State. And top scorer is Zaya James at 16 a game. We have a kickball here and a foul early. That was the challenge for Kristen Gillespie's staff. The size, the athleticism at NC State. Defense will be important today. On the defensive end, you know, Illinois State needs to make sure they also close out to our to the three pointers on, our, on NC State's end. Um, Isaiah I, James with a quick start. Yep, that mid range is going to be her bread and butter this game. You know, attacking the basket is good. You know, opens up the paint, opens up that three point three pointer for everyone else. An Illinois State team that scored 102 points had seven and double figures on Wednesday, and the ball movement here is impressive early. Wong with a nice bounce pass, working down low, and Wilson traveled. Two early turnovers of Illinois State. How do you calm this game down on the offensive end? In the half court is where you're going to get, you know, things going, especially in the Illinois State side on the defense. You know, on defense, work on getting those stops, work on getting those shot clock violations, so then you can go on the other side of the court and get the ball in the bucket. Six quick points, and River Ball would get involved down low. That was the matchup advantage Westmore wanted to target his post players in this game. You definitely see there is a little bit of a size advantage. Um, River Baldwin, her getting to the bucket and, and getting into the paint and making sure she stays consistent and hitting those layups. Baldwin's nearly averaging a double double, nine and six coming in. Wong and a little ISO finds Wilson. Nice spin move, and Baldwin says no. There's where the size plays a factor on the block. Rivers now running in transition. Interesting pass. James the moon ball, way off. 
I like the vision though from the point guard of NC State. Open three for Waite, and that's where she's special. Caroline Waite, the Bradley transfer with her first three. Waite is shooting 44% from the three-point line, and she has an extremely quick release that we just saw right there. Waite was the all-time percentage leader at Bradley before transferring over in her conference in the Valley. A block on the Hayes attempt. She's there on the second chance. That's great of Hayes to make sure she stays with the ball. I mean, there were four other defenders around her, but she, she made sure she got that ball on the bucket. Madison Hayes has been aggressive on the boards. Nearly three offensive rebounds a game. The Westmore's top five club. Here's Waite on the switch. This is where Hayes is excellent defensively. Now with a mismatch. Bowman lets it fly. Off on the three and an offensive board for Wilson. How important will the offensive rebounding be today? So we have a foul here on Wilson. But if you're Illinois State, these offensive rebounds will be critical. A little bit of a bobble there on the on the initial pass, but transition three, that's just a great shot by Wade. Um, in the flow, in the catch, shot catch and shot, catch and shoot, excuse me, and, and knocking it down. Caroline Waite hit a three in 29 of 30 games last year. She was fantastic at Bradley. And that was 169 threes in her career, both programs. NC State using that size mismatch. Mimi Collins down low and a miss. Baldwin snatches up, and that's an easy play down low. How about the offensive rebounding here for NC State? Bowman looks to get out of some trouble. Open three, wait. Wow, that's a great triple. Excellent ball movement for Illinois State. For sure, and, and on NC State side, they need to make sure they close out hard to those shooters and forcing the bounce. If they don't force a bounce, Wade's going to be open on that. The catch and shoot specialist in the Missouri Valley leads the league in three point shooting. Rivers will reset. Nice dump down to Baldwin. Sanaya late in the clock, opening up the triples for NC State. And that's what a lot of people want to see more often. We know Sanaya can go coast to coast in transition, but her sh shooting that mid range is a bread and butter, but her adding to the three to the game is going to what makes her special. Rivers has stepped up this year from deep. Wade's turn and a response. Three triples for Wade. Heat up here in Rolla. Hey, I mean, as I said before, they need to make sure they close out hard on her, forcing the bounce, forcing the bounce and getting her to get rid of the ball. Remember, Wade right went 0 for 6 on Thursday, couldn't buy a bucket for three. And Kristen Gillespie said if there's any game to miss a bunch of shots, it's the one before a top five team. Right. Here's Baldwin on the mismatch. That's just too easy. And NC State feeding its post players early. Right now it's a it's a Baldwin and weight game. Post player versus three point arsonist. What's the adjustment defensively if you're NC State? Getting a hand up, you see Madison is working really hard to contain and going off the, the off ball screens, but um, when she gets hit, she got to make sure she doesn't get hit, um, essentially. Coach Moore definitely harps that in practice. He says, don't be don't be a ping pong wizard. This NC State defense, top 10 in the country in opponents' points. They make it hard to score. It's the battle of two versus three. This is new school, old school basketball. Hayes with a crossover, and that's offensive. Good charge drawn by Maya Wong, and Kristen Gillespie, her first game back in Raleigh, is fired up. Early on, two offenses going to work. One in the lane for the Wolfpack, and Illinois State responding itself from downtown. Good test here early in Raleigh in a six-point game. NC State alum Kristen Gillespie back in the building here in Reynolds. She graduated in 99 and such a part of this program played for a final four team here at NC State was one of the best point guards in her tenure and then worked under Kay Yao for a couple of years as an assistant coach. Kristen with her entire family here tonight. Of course such a neat moment on alumni day to have a former Wolfpack player back and this entire Gillespie family including little daughter Emerson there and and her wife, Brittany, in attendance. This is a neat moment for the Gillespie family. It's a homecoming of sorts for three for Illinois State early. Three triples, looking for a fourth, and Coffee is off on the three. 
Rivers works it ahead of James. What a catch. Better find Collins. Beautiful one dish passing. That was great court vision by both Rivers and James. And then Mimi to run the court. That's a great run run by, by Mimi Collins. It's like watching the Golden State Warriors. One touch, everyone gets involved. That's great ball. No move. dribbles, too. And it leads to a wide open layup as we have a foul on this end. As an offensive player, when you see this type of movement, how does it inspire you? How does it push you forward? I mean, it feels good. I mean, you got Sanaya Rivers here, James running wide on the wing. That's as a coach, you want them to run wide. Then when you run wide, it opens up the paint. If everyone's clogging the paint and running inside the lane line, it, it clogs everything up. This is a team that's dishing the ball out well. Six assists on the first eight buckets, and here's an offensive foul against Illinois State. This Wolfpack offense that came in in the top 10 in the country in scoring 80 points a game. When you have six assists on eight baskets, that's dynamic as an offense. It is, for sure. And I mean, going on the flip side of that, Illinois State trying to disrupt that, I mean, what's something that you would like to see on Illinois State defensively um, to kind of disrupt NC State's scoring? Wolfpack shooting eight at 12. That's just too easy for Westmore's club. Nice kick to James. Man, that ball movement's clicking early, but a miss for three. Nice rebound for Coffee. But ironically, he's not a big coffee drink. Learned that this week. Wong lets it fly, and a fourth triple. This is new school offense. Four threes for Illinois State. On the season, Wong is shooting nine for 16 so far before this game. That's the strength of Illinois State. 40% coming in, top 12 in the country. As Rivers is off on the three. As Charles Barkley says, you live by the three and you die by the three. Although if you're Illinois State, you almost want to live by this great three-point shooting. For sure. I mean, I'm, I'm curious to see how many they're going to allow weight to shoot and even, you know, score in this game. Here's a loose ball that Hayes recovers and sneaks out with it. That's the fourth Illinois State turnover. The Wolfpack, meanwhile, have worked the ball inside. Ten points in the paint in this first quarter. Hayes on the blow by, breaks some ankles, and breaks down the defense for two. Literally breaks down the defense. That's an added element of Madison Hayes' game, driving to the basket, the Chattanooga, Tennessee product. Known as a three-point arsonist in West Moore's eyes early, but that's a, a new element of her game. You know, that's good for Madison, too. That's what keeps you on the floor. If you turn yourself into a multi-dimensional player, that allows you to stay on the court and then also add it to her defensive play. A lot of times she's going, she's uh, guarding the, the, the offensive players that are the most active and seeing her condition on this drive, she attacked that high foot, nice shot fake, puts the ball in the bucket. That's two defenders by the wayside. It's like us on the drive in from Raleigh. Two birds, one stone. Rushing through highway 264 from the east coming in. River Baldwin by way of Tallahassee, the Florida State transfer. Zips through the lane, but off on the jumper. Can Illinois State take advantage in transition today? That was a huge point for Kristen Gillespie. Hitting threes on the break it was a big part of the offense for Illinois State. Reigning Missouri Valley champions of the regular season. And now a three for Savannah McGowan, who's off. That was just Savannah McGowan's second three-point attempt for the, for the season. You're living with that if you're NC State, right, defensively? Absolutely, absolutely. That's why you see River Baldwin um, stacking, stacking down in the paint. Wolfpack, meanwhile, 14 points in the paint, living on the size mismatch. Rivers here with five, cuts through the lane, and is rejected. Baldwin, the lucky beneficiary there to bank it in. Baldwin is playing electric right now, making sure she stays active on the, the offense and defensive end. I mean, with the block down here earlier today and then staying with the play, uh, getting that offensive board. Eight points in nine minutes, now 10 points. That's an electric first quarter. Oscar Robertson's record of 100 might be on the line today if Baldwin keeps this up. We have a foul on the floor. What was the most points you ever saw from an NC State player in one game? I believe it was I think it was 23 or 26, maybe, against Texas. And we were in Hawaii in a Thanksgiving tournament. And River Baldwin had a National Player of the Week type performance down in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Not only the 15 points a game, but big on the class and, and a strong performance against two national ranked teams. That's definitely the post presence that NC State wants to see, you know, before we go into the ACC play. You got a whole bunch of trees down there, um, and it's good to see that River's, you know, getting that confidence as she's, as she's in the paint. 
Baldwin with the block on that shot. And Westmore noted for Baldwin, living up to the potential of an All-American at high school. This is maybe the first year he's seen that from River. Right. As a sloppy turnover from Isaiah James. In that situation, you're telling Graffin to pass. You have the ball up high, and then you pass up high. Fake high, bounce pass low, or vice versa. Illinois State has hit four threes. Make it five. Abby Alsma out of Wisconsin hits the three. Nothing but cheddar. Jeez. I'm glad you picked up on my reference. <laughs> All five buckets are from three-point range. It's the most triples NC State's given up in a first quarter all year. Rivers with five. Good little crossover. Better defense, though. And a stop to end this first quarter. Wow, this is new school, old school basketball. Working in the paint versus shooting it from deep. And Kristen Gillespie's Illinois State squad hanging around down six after this first quarter. Quick start for Illinois State. Five triples in the first quarter, Pat. I mean, they're shooting five for nine, 55% from the three. If I'm Coach Moore at the end of that quarter, I'm yelling at all the perimeter players or even just everybody saying, hey, close out harder. You need to close out all the way and force the bounce. Illinois State came in an excellent three point team. This is number 13 in the country in percentage at 40. If you're Kristen Gillespie, you have to love this first quarter start. For sure. And I mean, kudos to them. They're, you know, taking taking note on those weaknesses, and that's the closeout game right now for NC State. First possession inside for Bowman, who's now third in all-time blocks at Illinois State. Great defender. Ball movement here. Deja Smith checks in off the bench. A drive for Coffey. And a miss on the first non-three of the day for Illinois State. Zoe Brooks checks in for NC State. One of the top scoring freshmen in the ACC behind Hannah Hidalgo of Notre Dame. Open three, Lacey Steele, and the Wolfpack hit their second triple. And that's what you want to see from Lacey as Coach Moore, hitting the open shots and then also just containing your man on defense. Westmore noted designing plays for Steele coming in off the bench. And for a true freshman, that's a big sign. For sure. I mean, that shows that he has confidence in her. And then it's just, you know, her building that confidence in the, in the past few games. Illinois State has only made three pointers, five triples so far today. As the clock hits five, Molly Lenz gets in trouble, kicks it out. Bowman loses track of the clock and heaves it up late. That's a shot clock violation. There's nothing like playing defense for a good 30 seconds and it's going your way. A Wolfpack team that. Defensive specialist. That was your calling card here, Kai, at NC State. I mean, you can, you can add three point specialists too if you wanted to. Part of three ACC championship teams here in Raleigh. Wolfpack in that first quarter lived in the lane. 16 points in the paint. You see Rivers there directing traffic with River Baldwin. Instead, buys space for Steele, who cannot hit the three. What's the adjustment on this end defensively against the three pointer? I mean, NC State, you know, closing out, you can tell that they're trying to get to the shooters. Right now, it looks like they're not playing as much in the gap. Um, they're kind of leaning more towards playing ball side. Zoe Brooks here with the steal. Good effort there by Brooks. Good run by Rivers. Oh, Rivers runs the break and misses. Collins cleans it up for the N1. That's a take advantage in transition if you're NC State. Zoe Brooks analyzing the deal. That was a look. That was like a one hand, no look pass there. Shania Rivers didn't get the finish, but Mimi Collins running the rim got the finish and the end one. A 5 0 start here for NC State and the great nugget. First free throw of the day for either team. That's what Coach Moore likes, you know, play without filing. Collins plays around the world and misses the free throw. Wolfpack came in shooting 78%. Maya Wong on the crossover, and Brooks is right in her grill. Excellent drive, and Baldwin absorbs the contact. That's a charge. That's one thing you're going to see from Baldwin just about every game is her taking a charge. You don't see a lot of a lot of post players dueling to hit the deck like that. And to be able to move her feet left to right, that, that would seem hard to do as a post player. 
Felipe Lopez and, and Brittany Blunt do a really good job, um, athletic trainer and strength and conditioning coach, working with the girls um, in the preseason, working on that lateral movement and getting in the weight room. So SC State draws its second charge of the game. This defense is clamped down on opponents right now in terms of scoring. Top 20 in the country, hardest to score. Kristen Gillespie begging for a foul on the defensive end. Can't get it. Baldwin fights for it. And now wait in transition. She was special in that first quarter. Three triples. Bowman gets it back. Remember, Illinois State scored 102 points on Thursday and went over Chicago State. Wong into the body of Brooks. Wilson the spin. Oh, lovely lefty finish. That was a nice little shimmy shake. Finish with the left. Took her to the car wash. Gotta love preseason all Missouri Valley, Deanna Wilson. Now she's guarding Baldwin tough down low. River dominated in that first quarter. Ten points. Steal on the attack. Oh, here's the mismatch. That's about six inches of height, and Rivers knocks it in. There's nothing you can do with that release. I mean, right now, they have weight listed as 5-4. On that closeout, I mean. What were you listed at here at NC State? So I actually think I grew an inch here. As Zoe Brooks, Brooks gets the steal. seal and runs it in in transition. So NC State here, what have they done defensively to change in the second quarter? Pushing up on defense, um, a little more aggressive in the passing lanes, um, and then also making sure they go over the screens. Going over those screens against shooters is what's going to help on the closeout, and then also keep the post up and not and not have to help the helper as much on the roll. There's a foul defensively for NC State. Steal the reach in. Because Illinois State came into this first quarter and shot the lights out. Five of nine from deep. In this second quarter, only one bucket and three turnovers mixed in. It's a great adjustment by NC State, but on Illinois side, now that they see that, you know, they're closing out a little harder, they may have to penetrate the gaps a little harder. That's back-to-back -back fouls on Lacey Steele. She might head to the bench here in the second quarter. The Edmond, Oklahoma product, not pleased with the call. Yeah, um, in that situation, you can't you can't run through the screener. That, and, Right there, you just you know shade around it. Um, she did end up coming out with those two fouls, but yeah, in that in that she should have just ran around the screen. Mallory Collier will check in the forward for NC State. Way off on the jumper. NC State able to limit second chance points today. Zero for Illinois State. Collier posting hard, asking for it. How important is it to feed your post player in a play like that? You see the foul here from Illinois State. I mean, it not only, of course, gets the, the post players open, but as a guard, I loved it. I mean, I played with Luisa Kunain here, um, and then being able to pass it into the post, and then knowing that she's a good player, they're going to collapse on her, and then just relocating on the three and knocking it down. Kunain, a multiple-time All-American here at NC State. Brooks to inbound it. Top-rated freshman for the Wolfpack. And finds the reigning sixth player of the year in Sanaya Rivers. What a nice tandem. Two studs. We've got a mismatch here. And then we have a wrestling match on the court. That's a foul on Abby Alzma. As a guard on a switch or either just playing defense on a post, man, they're strong. They're really strong. So holding that seal, I mean, holding the seal is a big thing, but being able to either stay in front or, you know, try to push him up, shove him up into your help is really challenging. Wilson is checked out with the three fouls. That's a big loss for Illinois State. Collins blows in through the defense and misses the layup. Loose ball. Brooks goes through. And the smallest player for NC State gets the offensive board. It looks like she might have tried to double clutch there. Great for Zoe Brooks to stay with the play. You see kind of nobody knew, really knew where the ball was at for a moment, but Zoe Brooks kept her eyes up and then saw the double clutch. It seems like she does a double clutch almost every game. Zoe Brooks is now Westmore's top sub off the bench. A true freshman who has come in at average nine points a game. And Wes is noted in appreciating her role as that sixth player to open up his offense. And also that spark off the bench. Um, you know, when, when the starters come out and, and Zoe subs in, you don't want that energy level to drop. Now she plays tough defense on weight and a reach-in foul. 
That's a matchup of two mighty mites in terms of size. That's always the fun ones. And as a true freshman, Kai, you've been in this position. How difficult is that to come right in and make an impact for NC State? You know, um, it's definitely a humbling experience, especially when everyone is at this level is the best. Um, and then being able to compete, you know, and a lot of times in high school, you, you can be nonchalant and um, making sure that you always play hard and, you know, finding that sixth gear. As Wong is off on the three, Brooks into her bag. The freshman kicks it to James. You think of elite freshman in the ACC, you think of Hannah Hidalgo of Notre Dame. And then James, she stepped out of bounds to turn it over. If it would have counted, that would have been a great move. It looked like she, she looked like she took off from, from the opposite side of the, the lane. And this is an NC State program that has lived the last three years with six player of the year honors. Know how to make those bench players impactful. And I mean that's that's what it is. You know, coming to a big school like this, everyone has to work for their for their position in the starting lineup. Here's a deep three for Bowman that is off. You think of bench production, the Wolfpack are actually ninth in the ACC in bench scoring. Last year they were in the top five, largely due to Sanaya Rivers. James gets in the lane and hits a nice jumper. This leads Balloon to 16. She really rubbed off the screen right there. You know, as a position coach, a guard coach, you really want to make sure that the guards go, go they say shoulder to shoulder, go shoulder to shoulder, and then um, that allows more space for you It's to a 7-0 run for NC State, a media timeout. We'll come back and wrap up the second quarter when we return to Raleigh. This week marks the debut of the ACC SEC Challenge. How about this? It ended in a tie, seven apiece. ACC had that early lead, and it's interesting early. 15 teams projected to make the tournament from these two conferences, and we saw multiple top 25 matchups this week. Anything stood out to you, Kai? I mean, a couple things. Um, there's always a debate on what conference is the best, and I will continue to be biased and say it is the ACC. Here's Zoe Brooks making an impact on the possession. How about LSU bouncing back with Angel Reese healthy and her response in the big win over Virginia Tech? You can tell that she kind of had to get her legs back up under her during that game. Um, but you could see that she still, you know, remained the leader on, on the court. And um, giving, her, giving her teammates that confidence, it's always good to be able to have that person that can come back in and, um, and help the team with the win. Meanwhile, South Carolina not missing a beat, taking down North Carolina and battling Duke at the moment. That's a tight game in the fourth quarter. Don Staley, number one team in the country. They are rolling right now. Pow Pow was excellent. She's got 20 points in that game. And a short jumper from Zoe Brooks. What's the separation between a number five NC State and a number one South Carolina right now? You know, that's a great question. I think you need to ask me that at the end of the game, and I maybe be able to come up with a with a good explanation. But um, honestly, I feel like if you know South Carolina and NC State went head and head, it'd be a great game. Um, again, I'm biased. Um, when I was playing here, we played we played South Carolina, and we beat them at number one at their place. Um, so I definitely feel like they would they would go head and head and be a good game. As far as matchup, of course, you have the athleticism on both ends. Working down low here, Savannah McGowan in the post. Nice blow by and a good hook shot for the Plymouth, Minnesota product. And who says the Dr. J hook shot's out of style? I love that move in the post. It's not. Coach Moore, Coach Moore loves the hook shot. I mean, again, referencing Lisa Cunane, that's what he, he said, baby hook, baby hook. That's all you heard him say when she got the ball. Here's Rivers going the hook shot herself. How did she get that board? And it's fouled on the way up. One player in a pile of three Redbirds. And the Wolf comes out with it. She did good staying patient here with the step through. Collier did good standing up straight, um, but as far as a lot of movement, if she would have stayed in front of her a little more, um, she may have been got, being able to get a hand on the ball, but the step through was really good, and it was good for her to stay patient throughout. Two free throws here for, for Sanaya Rivers. Savannah McGowan's a big fan of the Golden Girls, and her nickname around the team is Sweet Cheeks. So I can see <laughs> the movement there, the footwork. Yeah, that means she, she should be able to know how to dance or something, right? And McGowan's got that coordination for sure. And this board will go the other way. Last touch by Maddie Cox for NC State. Maddie Cox has been doing good as a freshman here for, for the Wolfpack, too. There's Grandma Rose to trigger it in with her young unit. I think of the Golden Girls, and I think of the 1970s, early 80s. Great times. 
You know the Golden Girls are still running reruns on Netflix. Waits gets the bucket. And and one chance here for Cameron Wade. And that's her first bu bucket inside the three-point line. And I mean, that's a great take for, for Wade. Um, attacking his eye, you see she's playing on the high side. And being able to get the ball off before the help comes over, Collier gets her a little bit on the bump. Um, if Collier would have got there a little earlier, she might have been able to, um, to disrupt the shot a little bit. But it was a great take by Wade. Caroline Waite, whose mom, Betsy, played softball at Illinois State, second generation Redbird, able to hit the free throw. Part of the Waite family came in attendance today. She has some cousins from the North Carolina area. They drove over. Basically, that entire section behind coach is the Gillespie clan, former player here at NC State, an assistant under Kay Yao, the legendary coach. James is doubled. Somehow got through traffic, found Maddie Cox, who bounces the three out. Big possession here, down 12. Just over two minutes to go for Illinois State, who's hit five triples today. Wade's been a big part of that. Wants a fourth, nearly had it. NC she State's got to be careful on those looks. Yeah, and I mean, she might have shot that from the A and K out court. That is the men's range and beyond. We joke in the NBA about possible four-pointers down the road. That might have been it. As Baldwin muscles through for the foul, she'll head to the free throw line. It was good for Baldwin to catch it and take a jump stop. If she would have kept on going through with that play, would have taken her momentum out of bounds, they might have been able to, uh, to call a charge on her on that. Ten points in that first quarter for River Baldwin. This is really her first touch in the paint in the second quarter. And what a weapon here for NC State, second year transfer. We noted the All-America honors, playing like it here in her second season. Gets her numbers up to 12 points. Final two minutes of this first half. Illinois State wanted to crash the party here in Reynolds. Good shot fig from Dowell. Shannon's off on the jumper. And now Zoe Brooks, top-rated freshman. That's a young lineup on the court. Three freshmen and a couple of upperclassmen. James gets by Dowell. Somehow throws out that pass. Look at the ball movement for NC State. And Brooks converts. You gotta love that as a player, getting everybody involved. For sure, for sure. And I mean, a Zion the hammer pass, and then the one more, one more. All those could have been good shots, but they ended up by the great for the great shot by Zoe Brooks. How about the Wolfpack with eight assists on 16 buckets? That's a big number in this first half. Absolutely. I mean, that's the adjustment that you have to make, especially coming out of that first quarter. The Wolfpack came into this game seventh in the ACC in assist to turnover ratio. Much better performance today. And a three is missed on the other end. Eight assists, only three turnovers for the Wolfpack. Brooks just glides through the lane with ease. It's like watching AI with her movement, her swag on the court. You know, I had, to, I had to rock the AI headband. And, you know, of course, number three. 20 years removed from AI's trip to the finals with the Sixers as Baldwin comes up short. Let's see what Cameron Waite has left. Ten second difference here. Possible two for one. Instead, Illinois State will work the clock. Only shooting 25% in the second quarter. Wide open three. Best be careful. There's a huge triple for Brooke Coffey. And that's what you want to see more of uh, coming here in the second half. You know, that penetrating dish in that situation, we had, you know, the defense looked like they might have gotten a little confused and allowed the, the wide open shot. Zoe Brooks holds for the last possession. Looking for help and throws it away. That's the fourth turnover and a sloppy one there for Zoe Brooks. It was a good idea, but a better pass. Isaiah James, I'm confident she could have knocked that down in the corner. Okay, one-tenth of a second here. Really no opportunity. So that ends the first half. NC State balanced 12 points from River Baldwin and Illinois State living by the three. 14-point game at halftime. We'll break it all down when we come back to Raleigh here on Alumni Day at Reynolds Coliseum. We'll come back after this on ACC Network Extra.
It's Alumni Day here in Reynolds Coliseum. Countless former NC State players and staff back in attendance today. This is a neat moment here at halftime. And the Wolfpack up by 14 over Illinois State and former NC State player Kristen Gillespie, the head coach. You're seeing now honoring some former players, and we're going to feature a spotlight of the decades. This time, the 1970s. Think of Susan Yao and company. A little spotlight here at NC State during halftime. NC State women's basketball. The first season of NC State women's basketball was in 1974. Peanut Doak, in his only season as head coach, led the Wolfpack to an 11-4 record. The next season, A.D. Willis Casey brought in Kay Yao after a highly successful coaching career at Elon. Her sister Susan, who was an All-American player at Elon, joined the pack for her final season. We had a great player-coach relationship. We, it was strictly player-coach. You know what I mean? I called her Coach Yao. In Kay Yao's inaugural season, the Wolfpack finished 19-7, and, and Susan became the first NC State All-American in women's basketball. We accomplished a lot in that first year. We won the state championship. We went to the South Regionals. Now NC State women's basketball team was the best team in the state. Winning a state championship was a primary goal, even when women's basketball became an ACC sport in 1977. We were undefeated in the state of North Carolina the whole four years I played there. Duke, Wake Forest, none of them ever came close. Carolina, they came close a couple times, but they never, mm, -mm. <laughs> Never. The program was only three years old when Gina Beasley joined the Wolfpack in 77. She was a big recruit from a small town in North Carolina. You know, I'm from Benson. I'm from the country, okay? So I had never played in front of thousands and thousands of people before. Beasley enjoyed a record-setting four years filled with awards, All-American recognition, and she was part of the first ACC regular season and tournament championships. Her jersey hangs in the rafters, and she's still the career leader in points and rebounding. But her gratitude for NC State reaches beyond basketball. I had an opportunity to have a full scholarship. That was my, my way to get an education. Education was very important for me because I wanted to be a doctor. Gina Beasley, Susan Yao, Kay Yao, and Coach Nora Lynn Finch were part of the growth of women's basketball in the 1970s. I was serious when I said to Wolfpackers, if you come to watch us play, you're going to get hooked. You will like what you see. So we were a small group who believed this is a good thing to in, have the enjoyment of running and throwing and catching and making the shot. There's thrill in that. That was huge. I never ran on the floor with the pet band playing, the fight song. Oh man, it was so, just, it was like, it was wonderful. New experiences and simple improvements were greatly appreciated. You know, we were happy to get, just have three pair of new socks every year, you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, it's the first time I'd ever been given practice attire. I actually had practice attire. I didn't have to wear my own stuff and go home and launder my own stuff. We practiced in Carmichael, and so did the men. They practiced on the front court, and we practiced on the very back court, wooden backboards. And when the men got to get in Reynolds to practice, we would move to the front court where you had fiberglass backboards, and we thought that was big time. Sometimes Norm Sloan would let us come over to the big gym. <laughs> it was so different when we came to a game. We didn't have locker room. So do you dress at home? What do you do? We had a dressing room in Reynolds. It was called the ROTC classroom, <laughs> which means we didn't take a shower there. We just changed clothes, put our uniforms on, played, put our, take our uniforms off, go back to the dorm and take a shower. Stories from the 70s are part of the foundation of the Wolfpack program, and those who were part of it still carry a sense of pride. You know, Wolfpack women on the way to number one. That's been there since the beginning. That's always been the goal, to be the best that we could be. It's part of you, even though you're not playing, because it's the program.
celebrating 50 years of NC State basketball. And, oh, wait a second. Kai Crutchfield, that's right. You were a three-time ACC champion here in Raleigh. Great to see you on courtside celebrating with a bunch of alumni here in Reynolds Coliseum. And with that, Kai, we're thankful to have you back in the booth. I'm Evan Budrovich. First half in that game, NC State struggled to defend the three in the first quarter. Much better in the second. How did NC State's defense fuel their offense? You know, making sure that they pushed up on those three-point threats um, and being a little more aggressive in the gaps, that's what you want to see, those adjustments being made after the first quarter. Um, and just making sure that you close out with, with you know, intensity, close out hard, and make sure you force the bounce. Because Cameron Waite early had three triples in the first. That was a real challenge for Illinois State. Yeah, the three-point, the three-pointers, you know, right there, Isaiah James didn't necessarily get out to her. Um, a lot of times you say, if you see, if you see three to five feet, let it fly. Um, and then River Baldwin took over in the post. 12 points in that first half. She did everything she wanted down low. I mean, it started out with her getting great position. She kept the defender on her back, made a great move, and finished it up. Here, she rolled really good and finished it with the end. And also being a good defensive presence and staying aggressive with the ball. Um, setting the screens here, she just got in the way. I mean, when you get in the way of the defender, good things that happen, good things are coming away. Another double figure game for Baldwin. That's five straight now for River and really the story of that game was the two point shots of NC State you see the 22 in the paint and Illinois State living on the three 18 of their 25 were from deep there's the old adage what's more sustainable chucking it up from three or living in the lane and right now it looks like NC State style is the is the more beneficiary I mean in NC State again going back to making those adjustments NC State being able to feed off the three and attacking the bucket, getting those points in the paint is really what helps um, them on offense and spreading the floor. On the flip side, you know, then they also have to know how to guard that three point. This is an ACC conference that's really starting to heat up with national powers in the first two weeks. Headlined, of course, not only with the five nationally ranked teams, but a ton of talent up and down the league. NC State now the highest ranked team at five. And we've seen Virginia Tech play LSU. That was a great game in the challenge. One team to watch out for. I am curious with Florida State. Tania Latson back, all ACC guard. How good this league can be. And right now, eight teams projected to get in. And I mean, that goes back to, you know, the SEC-ACC um, challenge. You know, who is the better who is the better squad? It, we tied 7-7. Seven and seven, But right here, you know, with the rankings, it's it's... You know, it's clear as day. I mean, of course, I'm biased, but seeing all these people, I mean, seeing all these these teams in the top 25 just shows how strong this conference can be. NC State right now a projected two seed in Charlie Cream's bracket. It is worth noting the Pac-12 has nine projected teams led by number two Stanford and USC in the top 10 as well. I think those two leagues could go neck and neck for best conference in America. There's Wes Moore searching for his 251st win at NC State. His club's off to a 14-point lead and goes right back in the lane. There's Baldwin. That's great execution. Not sure if, you know, it drew up, but, you know, as a coach, and you, you call a play, and then it's executed out of, you know, a halftime or a timeout. That's a good feeling. The Wolfpack have pounded the ball in the lane. 22 points in the paint. Illinois State, meanwhile, living on the three. Six triples today. Wong kicks it out. Wilson playing with three fouls. Gets in a Baldwin. Nice bucket. This return of Deanna Wilson, that'll be important for Illinois State. Deanna Wilson is a little undersized um, in regards to guarding River Baldwin, but in that case, she used her speed uh, to go by Baldwin. Only played nine minutes in the first half. Baldwin is called for a charge. Sorry, a traveling, not a charge. I think either one could have been called there. Yep. Probably better for Baldwin not to pick up the foul. And now for Kristen Gillespie, who played here at NC State. It's her first time back as a coach, and only her second time back in Reynolds Coliseum because of coaching obligations. Long off the, off the screen. That's a tough look. And NC State's defense has been hard to score on today. It looked like Wong wanted to try to draw the foul there, but it was good of Rivers to, you know, keep her hand straight up. Beautiful pass to Hayes. NC State dishing the ball out well. Nine assists on 17 baskets. 
trying to keep up with some of the best teams in the country in addition to the Rock. Utah, 27 assists a night. Another top 10 team. As Collins rolls it out, gets it back, and the second effort there for the layup. Here's Waite, catch and shoot. Such a lovely stroke, but off on the three. James in transition. Nice pass to Hayes, who missed it. Bowman the rebound. Now look at Waite, begging for the rock. Catch, step back, shoots, knock it in. This is fun to watch. Shortest player on the court with five triples. And I mean, in that situation, the only person that was down in transition defense was River Ballin. So, you know, her, her job is to guard the paint. We'd rather her shoot the three, but I mean, hey, Waite is the one shooting, so do we really want her to shoot the three? James takes her turn for three. A little back and forth battle from deep. And now for Illinois State, got to find a way to get Waite involved here. Open three, Bowman. That is off. Four threes for Waite. Three others, but no one with more than one for Illinois State. Look at Collins fighting for position. She wants the ball. Rivers 1v1. Rebound, Bullman. This is a critical possession here for Illinois State. Down 16. Alzma is blocked. And a travel before the shot. It's a great cross court pass, great court vision. Um, you know, wait, Isaiah James cut. Isaiah James tried to, to close out hard, and then here, Isaiah James get her back uh, with, this, with the three point. It's fun to watch those two shoot the rock. James is top 50 in the country in three point shooting. And Waite leads the Missouri Valley shooting from deep. Rivers is so patient running this offense. What a find to James. And an offensive board. Hayes into some traffic. Heads to the free throw line. You know, when you get the ball that deep in the bucket and all board, you know, you might as well just put it back up. Um, I mean, depending on court, court awareness, court situation, depending on where the game is, you know, you pass it back out, but it was a great shot by, by Madison Hayes and drawing the foul. That's nine offensive rebounds for NC State, just dominating on the glass. Hayes misses the first. Sunday's a women's basketball doubleheader on ACC Network. This is coming up next week. Florida Gulf Coast battles Duke and then Kentucky versus number two Louisville. That's always a fun matchup. Catch the action on ACC Network and the ESPN app. It's that time of the year where rivalries start to pick up both on the football field and then those inner conference matchups are unique here in college basketball. For sure. And what makes it even more interesting is the inner conference transfers. Think of Mimi Collins who joined NC State via the conference. Same with River Baldwin. A lot of new faces. Sanaya Rivers from South Carolina. To beat Duke. Mimi Collins coming from Maryland and a block with a foul on the back end from Kate Pullman. It's unique looking at college basketball rosters now. Keeping track of who's who and who's from where. It does take a minute or two to put all the names together. It does. I mean, you know, you look at one team, you see them playing, you're like, hey, I know you. I played against you, but you're in the wrong jersey. Or, I mean, I wouldn't say the wrong jersey, but, you know, the transfer portal is definitely interesting right now, especially, you know, with the football team specifically. You've got a lot of people saying, hey, I played the whole season, but I'm not going to participate in the bowl game. I know, like, as a coach, that could be a little frustrating, but... Four of the five on the court for NC State, all transfers. And right now, a 17-point lead. Here comes the press from NC State. Have not seen this very often from Westmore today. And it nearly pays off. Oh, it does. A 10-second violation. Nice. What challenge does that present as an offense when you see a full-court press? I mean, especially because the, the team hasn't ran it the whole game. You know you have to keep it in your arsenal having a press breaker. But um, as a team, when the coach calls, hey, we're going to run the press out of this timeout, you're like, oh, yeah, we're about to, we're about to get something going. And then, I mean, like you said, in this case, it helped it for NC State. NC State forcing double-digit turnovers. Illinois State came in very secure with the Rock. Top 100 in the country in assist-to-turnover ratio. And a... Foul inside. That's the fourth foul on Wilson. 
She was fighting for position. And now McGowan subs in for her. South Carolina has just defeated Duke today. That's a big win for South Carolina. Not part of this challenge, but we talk about different conferences. We'll touch on that more after this media timeout. NC State remains up 17 here in Reynolds Coliseum. We need your help. I need your help. We need money for research. It may not save my life. It may save my children's lives. It may save someone you love. And it's very important. It is V Week and in Velvano Arena, very fitting. You can join the fight against cancer by visiting the.org slash donate. A hundred percent of those donations help in the fight against cancer. Always worth noting, 18 million cancer survivors out there. And Isaiah James continues her hot start. Best three-point shooter in the ACC and a nice triple there. NC State coming back out in the press. It looks like Mimi Collins is trying to get Zoe Brooks, but we got Madison Hayes with the steal. Now Rivers runs in transition. Ooh, threw a fastball to Collins, and she can't believe it. That's the emoji, the shocked emoji. Yeah. <laughs> And then right back into the defensive stance. This press has caused Illinois State back to back turnovers. And make it a third. Shannon Dowell steps out of bounds. Look like Bauman wanted to, you know, get another charge called there for him. This is a three minute scoring drought for Illinois State. And Westmore noted the struggle against Vanderbilt of closing out a game. What have you noticed in that department here in this third quarter? I think, you know, Staying consistent in the teamwork field, um, making sure that they continue to play NC State basketball and running the plays through. In the Vanderbilt game, you saw them, you know, someone taking, you know, a defender one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Mimi Collins here with the three, you know, she, she, that's another thing that she's added to her arsenal. So just continue to, to add on to your arsenal and uh, stay focused and stay locked in on those small things. NC State on Wednesday had a 26-point lead that dwindled to as little as eight. And Westmore, he was frustrated about his team's effort on the defensive end late in that game. As Cameron Waite is trapped by a double team. McGowan lets it fly, and a nice jumper for Illinois State, snapping a three-minute drought. Here on the offensive end, seven different players have scored for the Wolfpack, led by Baldwin, who is off on a tough jumper. Look at the speed here of Deja Smith. Maya Wong playing in her 93rd career game. The sharpshooting point guard kicks it to Wade. Oh, that's lovely. Five threes for Wade. That is such a dynamic small guard making things happen. I mean, that's their bread and butter right now. Penetrate dish, penetrate dish. Um, having that quick release also coming off a of ball screen, whether it's a downstream double screen, is going to be really beneficial for Illinois State. That's a two-pointer for Madison Hayes. And it's like watching Muggsy Bowes of the Charlotte Hornets back in the day. Little Cameron Wade, catch, shoot, make things happen. Only five foot four. Has a kick ball here on Madison Hayes, leading to a media timeout. It's a matchup with three-point sharpshooters today, Kai. Pretty fun one from deep. Yeah, I mean, here, Mimi Collins spots up, knocks it down. Uh, points to a passer, always a good one. Then you got penetrate dish, wait with the, oh, she might have shot that from NBA three. That was a deep one. We got a three point battle here in Raleigh. Welcome back to Raleigh, North Carolina. This is a big day in women's college basketball. Of course, Kristen Gillespie right behind Cameron Waite returning to Raleigh and a good matchup. South Carolina holds off Duke. How about that free throw disparity 16 to 23 five in double figures for the number one team in the country as Wong hits the end one that's a South Carolina team that went to Carolina and won, went to Duke and won. what a great start to the non conference for sure and I mean you know getting those wins you know adding to their arsenal adding to um, seeing different defenses is always good to see before you know you go into conference play Camilla Cardoso had a double double the the Florida State transfer 15 and 14. That size of South Carolina, if there's anything that makes them challenging, they're so physical down low. 
and that's what's gonna that's what that's what makes a good team. Um, being physical and being able to feed inside out. If you can work inside out as a good team, um, that helps with the guards. Not only the guards, and it helps with the post. I mean. And NC State at number five in the country. What would you say is their biggest strength? Um, that's a good question. I think right now, uh, speeding up their the people that they're playing against, whether it's you know them in transition offense or you know right now or recently we just seen them run the press um, but then also keeping them on their toes you see a lot of a lot of offenses where they set screens away uh, they penetrate and dish and look for the open look for the open roll or for the open spot up there's an open drive and a foul on Isaiah James tack in the basket this is an NC State team that's sixth in the country in opponent field goal percentage and today, Westmore's defense, they've been clamped down, holding Illinois State to 38. Yeah, and I mean, Illinois State has been averaging, what, above above 80 points a game? So um, that, in that situation, you definitely respect, you know, NC State's defense and what they've done in the adjustments they made. And as James adds on to the lead, it's one thing to stop opponents like in Illinois State, who made the NCAA tournament two years ago. It's another when conference play begins which is at the end of December, only three weeks away. Went by quick. NC State searching for a 9-0 start. It would be the fourth time in 11 years under Westmore. Not the team that was predicted to start 9-0. They were outside the top 25, but have played themselves now into a number two seed in Charlie Crane's back bracketology. And, I mean, they also um, weren't even top five ranked or top five projected in the ACC before the season started. Good second chance bucket for Deja Smith. And when you're a team that doesn't have expectations, you move into that role. How does that shift your mindset as a player? You know, just making sure you do what you know you can do in practice. I mean, in practice, coach definitely emphasizes, you know, playing hard, getting rebounds. And um, when you get those rebounds and get those second chance points, you know, that helps on the offensive end. That is a charge. Maya Wong call for the foul. Isaiah James there to take it. This NC State club, with the 8-0 start, have surprised some people, even here in Raleigh. We noted coming into the year, not projected in the top eight. Yeah, eighth overall in the ACC. But what they have done is defeat a top 25 Colorado and, of course, top 10 UConn. That really shifted the dynamic of this year's team. Absolutely. But, you know, beating those top teams, it doesn't seem like they have, you know, dropped any energy off of that UConn win. I mean, of course. And Rivers had, continues that start. Exactly. You know, Rivers that game, I believe she had 33 and 10. Um, and, you know, in in the in the Thanksgiving tournament, it seemed like she kind of leaned more towards the assist side of things. But it's good to know you have a point guard that can score and that could help her team with score. That was the most points given up by UConn to a single player in Rivers in over a decade. That was a dynamic performance. And there it is, River's second charge. I think I think she might have a goal each game. I know she, I know for a fact she she takes a charge. Actually, we, I don't know that for a fact. We saw I, her pregame call her mom on FaceTime. Maybe talked about some goals and said I want to take a charge today. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I called my mom before every game. That was like a that was part of the pregame routine. Mama Crutch, shout out to you. With Kai Crutchfield, who played multiple years, three ACC titles here at NC State. I'm Evan Budrovich. Look at James into the step back. They had a lovely James Harden S3. Absolutely. And with the and she's a lefty too. That's perfect. That's good, perfect. Good luck stopping James. Right now in the top 40 in the country, shooting from deep. And I a mean, timeout here for Kristen Gillespie. Yep. If you're Isaiah James into this hot shooting start, another three triples tonight. Talk about a dynamic start. That's an incredible year for James from three. And we'll take a 30-second timeout and come right back. Isaiah James, another three, three-pointers today. And right now she's behind Hannah Cohn of Chattanooga at 60%. James at 45% in the top 20 in the country. Camera Waite's been fun to watch. Five triples for the Bradley transfer. Looking for a sixth. Cameron Waite off the pick and pop. I love the ball movement of Illinois State getting her involved today. Cameron Way is doing a really good job using those off-ball screens, too. I mean, they've got they've set phase screens for her, down screens for her, double screens for her, and she's really utilized them. That's a season best. Six triples for Caroline Wade. And a huge transfer into the Missouri Valley from Bradley to Illinois State. Here's a three in the key on River Baldwin. Yep, phase screen, knock it down. 
It looks like Zoe Brooks also might have fallen asleep just a little bit there. I mean, drop down and help and make sure you play the gap. You know she's a good shooter, so you have to definitely stay close to her. Waite is the reigning freshman of the year in the Missouri Valley. And a quick clock malfunction will bring everybody back. Not only a three-point sharpshooter, but Caroline has the quickest release that Kristen Gillespie's ever seen in the player, and we're noticing that in these first three quarters. I mean, you have players that are, what, 5'11", 6 feet and above, closing out, and she's still able to get it off. I'm not even sure if what she has listed. They have her listed at 5'4". From where I'm sitting, it doesn't look like she's... Uh-oh. Here's the screen for Wade. NC State sniffs it out. Caroline drives in, and that'll stay here with five on the shot clock. The always enthusiastic Wolfpack crowd. Not a fan of that call. Yeah, it looks like Caroline, it looks like it. Oh, that oh, hit the leg did. of James, correct? Yeah, it did, it did. That's why we review it here. Good look by the crew. Five on the shot clock, and that pass goes into no man's land. Oh, Rivers a little off balance. Better find the James, and the ball movement's lovely here from NC State. This heave at the end of the quarter is short. And a 21-point lead for NC State. If you're West Moore, you got to love this ball movement here early. I mean, even here on the transition break, you know, um, it looked like Rivers kind of bobbled it a little bit, but Maddie Cox was able to fire Desire James running and finish with the left leg. It's all NC State through three. Caroline Waite, the new transfer in from Bradley, putting her Illinois State Redbirds on her back. That's a season high in points and a season high in three-pointers, six of eight from deep, carrying this offense today for Illinois State. Yeah, she came into the game shooting 44% at three, and it seems like she might have, you know, just adjusted her percentage a little bit this game. The shortest player on the court, but the toughest to guard for NC State who came in a top 25 scoring defense as Wong blows by one and rattles that one out. NC State led by 16 from James, 14 from Baldwin. And James remains in to start this fourth quarter. James gets one more look for three. And a fight for the boards. Maddie Cox came down hard. Illinois State in transition. Bowman back to wait. And off on the three. Now an injury timeout. Maddie Cox hit the court hard on her fall down. Brittany Blunt, the trainer. There's Coach Wes Moore taking a look. You can hear that thud, too, on the, the finish. I mean, she, she attacked the offensive boards really hard. I'm not sure if, you know, one of the Illinois State fans made an undercutter, but you could tell that her feet came from up under her. Keeping an eye on the true freshman there from Flower Mound, Texas. That's a good sign for NC State. Cox slowly getting back up. And there's Maddie returning to the bench. You can tell she landed hard on her back on that fall. Yeah, she attacks it hard here. Oh, yeah. You see she got her feet knocked up under her on that on that uh, on that rebound. Well head to the locker room to get evaluated by the training staff. So Mimi Collins will re-enter here for NC State. Wolfpack have passed the ball well today. 13 assists for Westmore's club. Now Zoe Brooks gets a couple of screens. Let's go with a three, and she's on the board from deep. Second Great triple. Execution. Great execution, especially Mallory Collier. Seeing that weight was about to go past her on that screen, resetting her feet and setting a good one. Nice triple in response. Abby Alsma for three. I love this battle. Ten threes for Illinois State, nine for NC State. This is new school basketball. Both teams letting it fly for three. Brooks on the attack. James now cuts through and looked to sneak a pass in there. Steal for Alsma. 
It was a good look, but in that situation, she probably could have done a bounce pass. Waite was pegging for it. The best shooter of the night here in Raleigh. Gets through a screen, heaves one up, and calls bank. It's Cameron Waite's day here in Raleigh. How many buckets is that that it was not a three-pointer for him? Only two, and a good one at that. When you're in your bag like that as Cameron Waite, what's the feeling as a player? I mean, you're the hot hand. You keep going. You keep scoring. You know, everyone's going to duck in on you. Great pass by Zoe Brooks there. Great hands by Mallory Collier. But, yeah, you know, wait. As a hot hand, you're staying hot. You know, if, if the defense sinks in on you. So, Bowman's off on the three. And if you're Illinois State, you might give a couple of chances here for Wade to let it fly in the next five minutes. Not a ton of movement on this possession for NC State, who on Wednesday watched a 26-point lead in the fourth quarter drift down to eight. Westmore noted he wanted a better performance in the fourth quarter today. Wong off the switch. Gets through one, gets all the way to the bucket. That's just too easy for Illinois State. It might have been a miscommunication there on the ball screen. Collier, I'm not sure if she was supposed to hedge or drop back, but there was also nobody there on the hell side either. Zoe Brooks lets it fly, and she's off on the three. Good start here for Illinois State in the fourth quarter. And Illinois State team, preseason favorites in the Missouri Valley after a regular season title. Wong on the drive, wants a foul, and does not get it. Kristen Gillespie cannot believe it. The former Wolfpack player graduated in 99 here in Raleigh. There's a lot of communication going on. What's NC State trying to figure out here? It could be tweaks that they made to plays um, from maybe previous games or last points, but it looks like they just ran the last play they ran for Zoe Brooks. Here. Here's a fight for the boards and a foul on Collins. You could tell, though, those last two or three possessions, NC State a little out of system there running the offense. But first, Wednesday's a doubleheader for men's college hoops. First, it's Rutgers taking on Wake Forest at 6 Eastern, then South Carolina and Clemson. We talk about in-state rivalries. That'll be a great one. Wednesday night on ACC Network. Wilson back to work in a great bucket. The offense, though, for Illinois State, you have to love the balance here in this fourth quarter. Being able to hit the open threes, being able to penetrate and dish, hit the mid-range, and have scores in the paint, you can see why they are their number one team in their, in their conference. Cameron Waite commits the foul on Lacey Steele. Northern Illinois, the preseason favorites, you and I, and then Drake, also voted in the top two in the Missouri Valley. Northern Indiana, I should say, not Northern Illinois. Northern Iowa. Illinois State voted third in the preseason. Amy Collins working downstairs. So the starters have largely come back in here for NC State, even in a 17-point lead. Rivers kicks it out to Steele. That one rattles out. Another cross-court pass. Alsma catch and shoot. That's where Illinois State's been dangerous today, knock it in 10 threes. Collins down low. Great patience. Brooks through some traffic and rolls that one in. 11 points now for Mimi Collins. Great patience in her, for her. Uh, Lacey Steele's man was trying to, you know, cat and mouse with her, but she waited for the perfect time to, you know, spin back to the middle. That's the 48th time in Mimi's career in double figures. Nice look. Wilson on the blow by, and then Rivers, the rejection there for. River Baldwin. Oh, Brooks. Like an ice skater at Christmas time, putting on the brakes. And then Collins goes to work. Back to back buckets for Mimi Collins. And you see that mismatch again that Coach Moore was talking about for this game. Wong lays it off. Wilson with a nice shot fake. And then Baldwin's having none of it. One of the SWAT queens of the ACC. And then Brooks gets rejected. Chance here for Deja Smith. 
And Baldwin is called for the foul. We'll take the final media timeout. River Baldwin putting on a show. 14 and 7 and a couple of blocks here in Raleigh. NC State celebrating 50 years of women's basketball here in Raleigh with a special alumni weekend. This was yesterday a reunion of sorts with former players and staff all coming together. We saw them at halftime with yourself as well, Kai, on the court. And this is a neat moment for the NC State program celebrating 50 years of tradition. It's huge. You know, you see these banners hanging here on the wall. Um, it's just a big, it's just a big thing. Again, it's all about the legacy. It's all about working hard and being able to get the program to where everyone wants it to be. Reach the 1,000 win threshold early this season. And now at 8-0, a top five NC State team. Here's Deja Smith to the free throw line. The good news for the folks here at Reynolds Coliseum, there are free treats on the line if Smith misses this free throw. A chance for some Chick-fil-A. The ultimate hush of the crowd. You can hear the disappointment. Illinois State cuts this back to a 20-point game. Maybe the biggest free throw of the day for the Redbirds, all things considered. Check it in for NC State. Katie Penuetta comes in out of Vancouver, Washington, the Sacramento State transfer, and Lizzie Williamson from Southern Utah. Good spin move from Williamson and a nice hook shot early. There goes that baby hook. Williamson was an all-defensive player in the WAC last year. And that's an added post presence for Westmore's club. A drive and a foul here for Brooke Coffey. How does that depth help NC State this season? Going into the conference, you know, conference play, um, you know, Hopefully there are no injuries, but making sure that you're always ready. Um, you know, me coming up into, I guess my sophomore year, we did have some unfortunate injuries. We had four ACL tears and, you know, next one up. That's always the mentality. Um, and then it also helps with, you know, if someone's not shooting well, someone else can come in, step up and be that spark off the bench. NC State finished the year with eight healthy players in the last postseason and, and fell in the first round. So Westmore, he loaded up on players, multiple transfers. And West has gone into his bench today. Six subs have checked in. That's a luxury we saw from South Carolina today, who had five and double figures and a big win at Duke. And they had nine players score for Don Staley's club. Steele kicks it out. Penuetta off on the three. And maybe that depth pays more off come ACC play, especially December 31st against Virginia, but you'll need that balance if you're Westmore come January and February. Balance is the key word. I mean, being able to have the, the depth inside and outside, shooting the three. You mentioned Isaiah James. We also see Mimi Collins shoot. Um, having even the four players, uh, KP's out here shooting threes. I don't even know, where would you, where would you say KP is a three or a four? That's a hell of a question. <laughs> she could play all the positions, that's for sure. I think nowadays positionless basketball makes it hard to put a player in a certain position. Especially if everyone's working together. Zoe Brooks steps out of bounds and turns it over. It was a good idea um, for Lizzie, you know, to hit the handle pass inside, working inside out, but um, a little bit of better pass would have allowed Zoe Brooks to hopefully, you know, get her second three over. No field goals in the last three and a half minutes for Illinois State who have outscored the Wolfpack in this fourth. That was a point of emphasis for Westmore coming in. His performance in the fourth quarter and a block there for Lacey Steele. Last game, the fourth quarter was where Vanderbilt, you know, came back and, you know, showed the hey, we're still in this game. The clock hasn't hit zero. Like we mentioned before, you know, the 20 point, the 26 point lead got down to eight with less than two minutes left in the game. Where have you seen the adjustment in from State today as Steele gets the, the turnover? because they've limited Illinois State in this fourth quarter. I will say 
weight when she's in the game, she is all she's a she's a three point threat. Um, in the second in the second quarter and the third quarter, uh, I say third quarter, you, they kind of got away from that, and you could tell by how many threes weight was able to get. Um, but I will say the defensive intensity was a little it was amplified um, coming into this game after the first quarter, seeing that hey. Illinois State's like, hey, we're here. We ranked number one in our conference, and we can stick with you as long as we can. But um, NC State was able to, to to bounce back from that. Zoe Brooks, who's taken over on the bench today, nine points, couple of assists for Zoe, anchors this back unit. Nice find to Hayes, who somehow angles up a shot and puts that one in. Nine points for Madison. Hayes is one point shy of being the fourth in double figures for the Wolfpack. Tight drive, tough contest, and a foul on the attack. So Deja Smith heads the line, and you see Hayes there. Thought she didn't commit the foul. And this crowd gets fired up. They want free food. Two missed free throws, and that'll happen. Coming up this week, the ACC Huddle Crew will get you set for bowl games. Two-hour selection show tonight with a breakdown of the ACC bowl teams, especially some Florida State talk. Coming up at 6 Eastern on ACC Network. How about that? Florida State undefeated. League champs left out of the college football playoff. Are you a football guy? I love football. Me too. So you feel like then Florida State should have gotten in? Yes. And with Bama, the last team into the playoff, Makes for a neat discussion, that's for sure. As Williamson falls glass. That was a that was a hook hook. She hooked over her left and her right shoulder on that one. Four points off the bench for the Southern Utah transfer. Madison Hayes playing tight defense here late. NC State came in a top 25 scoring defense, and they're showing it again with a steal. Lacey Steele with the steal, runs the break, and is rejected. Deja Smith has having none of that little step through. I mean, she got her on that end, so she she stayed. It's good that she stayed with the play and got it back. Nice post middle. She was facing the sideline out on that one, but a great finish. Great finish by Lizzie. Lee. That's a game of horrors. Turn on my left, bank it off the glass. A little kiss of the English. And now Zoe Brooks will sub out for the final time. Jana Ayesa will come in, the true freshman from Cairo, Egypt. She's a walk-on. And every time a walk-on touches the rock, there's, there's a unique energy in a building. I think it was against the UNC Charlotte game. She knocked down a three. Oh, here's her chance. Ayesa on the back down. Good contest there from Savannah McGowan. Illinois State gears up for a top 25 home matchup, hosting Marquette in a week. And NC State gears up for Liberty here in Reynolds in a week. And a foul will send Brooke Coffee to the free throw line. What a week for Illinois State. Top five NC State and then hosting a big time Marquette program. Building off of, you know, a lot of times coaches you see on the scout and you see, you know, on the box score, it's, it's, a, it's a loss. But in this situation, learning from these things, you know, playing a power five school isn't easy. And now the biggest free throw of the day. Free Chick-fil-A for the fans in attendance if this is a miss. Oh, clutch. I know one-point games are clutch free throws, but there's a different element here late in this contest. Especially if it's for free food. Instead, a 21-point game. You gotta love the engaged nature of this crowd in Raleigh for Alumni Weekend. They are locked in. Ayesa thought about the three. Now lets it fly and is off. The walk-on nearly broke this place open. I might have I might have shot the first one on the double screen, the pin down. She just had to add a little bit of spice to it, you know, keep people on their toes. So every player on Westmore's roster is now checked in. Kristen Gillespie's squad, one of the favorites in the Missouri Valley, putting on a, a good show today. And a three, a nice way to cap it. Deja Smith with the 11th triple. 
All things considered, good performance from Illinois State. Meanwhile, NC State defends home turf. Eighth straight home win and putting on a crowd on alumni weekend. Wolfpack moved to 9-0 for the fourth time in Westmore's tenure here at NC State. Yeah. It's a, again, it's about the legacy. Um, you see the connection between the head coach, Coach Gillespie, um, coming here. You see her hugging the, the players here. Um, it's all about family. You know, it's all about family playing the game basketball that you love. I'm sure Illinois State will have some film and some things that they're going to want to work on as they go into their next game against Marquette. And um, it's just so touching seeing Gillespie really, really connect with each player on the, on the team. That shows the kind of person that she is. Um, and I'm excited to see, you know, NC State here and how what they're going to take on from this game. You know, there's always lessons and there's always things that each side can do better. And I'm sure both coaches, they're great coaches. They, they'll, they'll cook something up. Kristen Gillespie, a two-time grad here at NC State, welcomed back for a great weekend. However, it's number five NC State flexing its muscle. Westmore's club off to a 9-0 start. Thanks for joining us on ACC Network Extra for Kike Crutchfield and all of the alums here at NC State. Fantastic weekend. Illinois State put on a good showing, but it was all Wolfpack today. I'm Evan Budjovich, Lucas Raycraft, our producer. We say good night from Raleigh in an 18-point NC State win.